Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and this one is titled Dryana's Revenge. It's a Mardu Reanimator deck, featuring the 5 mana rare enchantment from Ikoria, Offspring's Revenge, which says at the beginning of combat on our turn, exile target a red, white, or black creature card from our graveyard, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1 1, and it gains haste until your next turn. So, Offspring's Revenge is a unique way of reanimating our creatures, so we do need to make sure that those creatures have a powerful and the battlefield effect or some other useful ability, otherwise they're not gonna do a whole lot as 1-1 tokens. And then the other reanimation effect in the deck is with Drana, the Lance of Blood Chief, 5 mana for a 4-4 legendary vampire cleric from Zendikar Rising. She has flying, and whenever Drana attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in our graveyard, and we return that card to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, and it also turns into a vampire. So Drana is a very powerful card, but it is a bit slow to get going since we need to play Drana, she needs to resolve, and then we need to untap with Drana and attack before we get any value, so it can be a bit slow to get going, which is why reanimating Drana with her Offspring's Revenge is actually pretty sweet, since we get to make a 1-1 hasty version of Drana that gets to attack right away and trigger the ability so we can reanimate another creature from our graveyard. So Offspring's Revenge is definitely the preferred reanimation effect to get in play first, and then we can maybe get Drana later. So these are the two main reanimation effects in the deck. We can also use the 5 mana activated ability on Kenrith to return a creature from a graveyard, so we have that ability as well. We could also be considering Thwart a Grave as another reanimation effect, which has some good synergy with our party creature types, since we do have wizards, rogues, clerics, and even warriors in the deck we can reanimate, so Thwart a Grave would also be an option in terms of reanimation spells. Now one of the reasons we're playing this Mardu Reanimator deck today is that the mill decks in Standard are very popular right now, so we keep facing decks that tend to put a lot of stuff in our graveyard, so we might as well take advantage by reanimating those creatures with our Offspring's Revenge, which also benefits from having a ton of creatures in the graveyard, so we can keep getting stuff back turn after turn. And that's also the reason why we're not playing a whole lot of self-mill creatures, like we're used to seeing Mire Triton at 2 mana to mill ourselves to fill the graveyard, but that's not super necessary at the moment. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we do need some discard effects to help us get rid of expensive creatures in our hands so we can reanimate them from the graveyard. So we've got the full playset of Cathartic Reunion, need to discard 2 cards as an additional cost and then we get to draw 3. And we also have the full playset of Fisher Wizard from Zeneca Rising, 2 mana for a 2-1 that when it enters a battlefield gives us the option to discard a card and if we do we get to draw a card. So another discard outlet that's also a creature we can potentially reanimate with Dryana or Offspring's Revenge. Another creature we can consider at 2 mana that I didn't include is Fiend Artisan, as even if we reanimate it with Offspring's Revenge, it's still going to be a 1-1 one, one with the ability to get plus 1 plus 1 for each creature in our graveyard, so it's still going to be a giant creature, especially when facing a mill deck, although the double black makes it a little tricky to cast on turn 2. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Savai Crystal, which allows us to ramp into a turn 4 reanimation effect like Offspring's Revenge or Drana, so the additional ramp is very useful. We don't have any 1 mana spells to leverage the fact that the crystal comes into play untapped and we can tap it for mana right away, but it can potentially help us double spell in later turns. And we also have two copies of Woe Strider, 3 mana for a 3-2 that when it enters a battlefield is joined by an 0-1 goat token, and we can sacrifice another creature to scry 1, and we can also escape Woe Strider from the graveyard for 5 mana by exiling 4 other cards from our graveyard, and then it escapes with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So we don't really have any major sacrifice synergies in this deck, but Woe Strider is still decent for a couple reasons. First off, it's an escape creature, which is quite good against the various mill decks, since we can just play it out of the graveyard and also reduce the number of cards in our graveyard to potentially shut down any synergies that rely on the opponent having eight or more cards in their graveyard. Next up it also makes a token, which is quite nice if we have a Rankle Master of Pranks on turn four, as we get to maybe sacrifice the Goat token to Rankle's ability. And then having tokens is also quite nice if we manage to get Harmonious Archon in play, which turns all our non-Archon creatures into 3-3s, three so all of a sudden our goat will turn into a 3-3 three three as well, so any token creatures are quite good in the deck as well. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Liliana, Waker of the Dead, giving us a bit of interaction with the minus 3 ability, and we can also force each player to discard a card with the plus 1, which is another way of discarding our expensive creatures to then reanimate, and if we ever manage to pull off the minus 7 ultimate, that's going to be awesome in this deck as well. 
And then we also have two copies of Rankle Master Pranks, four mana for a 3-3 legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste, and if it manages to deal combat damage to a player, we can choose any number of abilities between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature, and all three modes are very useful in this deck. And then at 5 mana, besides our 4 copies of Offspring's Revenge and 2 copies of Draena, we also have 2 copies of Kenrith the Return King, which is another legendary creature like Rankle that we can't reanimate with Draena, but Kenrith does make for a nice reanimation target with Offspring's Revenge, even if it's just a 1-1 one -one, we can still use the various activated abilities, either giving our creatures Trample and Haste with a red ability, gaining 5 life with a white ability, or putting a creature from our graveyard onto the battlefield with the black ability. Now we could also potentially include some off-color path pathways in the mana base to help us activate the blue and green abilities on Kenrith, but I haven't really found that to be needed, and we do want a decent number of basic lands, especially when facing the mill decks, we might run out of basics in the deck to search up with Fabled Passage otherwise. And then at 5 mana we also have two copies of Ox of Agonas, which is a 4-2 that when it enters the battlefield makes us discard our hand, and then we draw three cards, but we can also escape the Ox for double red by exiling eight other cards from our graveyard, and then Ox escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it, so another great card to have against the various mill decks, as we can reduce the number of cards in our graveyard and get a nice creature to boot. And then topping off our curve at 6 mana, we've got the full playset of Harmonious Archon, which gives us a 4-5 flyer, saying non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness 3-3, so that also includes the opponent's creatures, and when Archon enters the battlefield, we also get to make two 1-1 one -one white human creature tokens, which will also turn into 3-3s, three so Archon is perfect to reanimate with our Offspring's Revenge, since we still get to add at least 7 power and toughness to the board, and it's also a non-legendary creature that we can get back with Drana. And then we also have two copies of Morag, Fury of Akum, 6 mana for a 6-6 a legendary Minotaur Warrior, saying each creature we control gets plus 1 plus 0 for each time it has attacked this turn, so also synergizes nicely with the various small creatures and tokens in the deck. And Landfall says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this one, and at the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. Now Morag can be a bit confusing the first time you play it, since you do need to make sure to play your land in your second main phase, otherwise you're going to miss out on the untap step, which is pretty important to be able to attack twice. But Morag is incredibly synergistic with our Offspring's Revenge, because by getting an additional combat step, we also get an additional Offspring's Revenge trigger, letting us reanimate yet another creature. So that synergy is definitely awesome in the deck, even though Morag is a legendary and we can get it back with Drana. And then going over the mana base, we've got six basic lands that we get to search up with our Fabled Passage. We've got four copies of Savai Triome, fixing our mana and letting us cycle it for three mana if we don't need more lands. And then we've got eight of the pathways in our colors with the Bright Climb pathway and the Needle Verge pathway. Again, we could potentially play some off-color pathways for Kenrith, but haven't found it to be necessary. And then four Temple of Malice, letting us scry one when it enters the battlefield tapped. So that's my take on the Mardu Reanimator archetype. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of different card choices and a lot of ways to build it. You could potentially play some sweepers at four mana, like Extinction Event or Shatter the Sky, if you want more anti-creature cards. So that's another direction to potentially take the deck in. But for now, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with... A reasonable hand. Turn one temple, look for land. Liliana could be okay, but I would really prefer to draw a land here. So Arkhan's definitely getting discarded, and then... Going Strider into Rankle would be ideal, but we we're missing the untapped lands for that to work. Do I just take a bit of a gamble and discard Triome? Hope to draw untapped land and then Passage on turn 4. Yeah, I guess so. Alright, we got there. So I get to curve Strider into Rankle, which is a nice sequence. Double Morag in hand. Strider gets drowned, so my opponent's playing the mill rogue deck, presumably. Or a tutelage deck. Well, I really want to find one of my reanimation effects now.
don't want my opponent drawing a card with tutelage in play necessarily. Although if they mill ox, I can escape an ox from the graveyard. Yeah, I think I still need to make each player draw here. And then discard. And then I can also just escape Strider. Oof, Mills double revenge. That's painful. Another tutelage. Now drawing with Rankle becomes pretty pricey in terms of cards milled by a tutelage. So can get back Strider, or I can set up a 6-drop for next turn. I could even play Morog and play Land in the same turn, which I guess is kind of nice. Kenrith is just going to get milled, so might as well bottom. Since I'm not going to draw with Rankle here. But I can discard... So your opponent's holding some counter spells. Extinction events gets rid of Rankle. Drown out the draw. So I could play Morog. Although not really taking advantage of the ability right away. So maybe you Drown us the play. And then I'll keep land in hands. Third tutelage. Discards a cacophony. If they have any sort of card draw here, our deck is gonna vanish in a second. Cacophony mills for eight. So I basically need to kill my opponent this turn. Now the awkward thing is I kind of need to play Fable Passage now. Because otherwise... If they make me discard my hand to the Ox, if I get it back with Drana, I might not have a land to play second main. Although do I have any basics left in the deck? Let's see, we've got two planes gone. Two mountains, or one mountain gone. Two swamps gone. So I have one mountain left in the deck. So if I draw the mountain with the ox trigger, that also means Fable Passage doesn't have any targets, I think. Hmm, I think I don't play the land yet. Just attack, see what they give me back. And then I can either play land second main, or if they give me an ox, I can maybe draw into a land with the three cards we draw. Right, Fisher Wizard discards Drana. And then... I'll fetch... There we go. The Wombo Combo assembled. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with pretty slow hands, but we do have Crystal to maybe help us. And Liliana can discard creatures to then reanimate with Drana, so I'll try it.
probably gonna play Passage turn 2, so we can be guaranteed a turn 3 Crystal. And then probably doesn't matter too much which color I get, since Crystal will fix our mana. But I'll get a Swamp. Opponent with a turn 2 Griffin Airy, so maybe a life gain deck. Hopefully draw land so we can play Drana on turn 4. Alright, perfect. And next turn pre-combots I can maybe play Fisher Wizard to discard a creature to reanimate. Banishing Light exiles Drana, so there goes that plan. Now I'm hoping I can find another land so Fisher Wizard can discard a creature and Liliana can kill the priest. And there we go. Probably just discard Strider because we're pretty close to just casting the Ox for a good value. Kill the priests before it gets any plus one counters. And we can discard with Liliana before we play Ox. Lurus is gonna get back. The Priest here. Alright, so... Probably just going to plus Liliana, play Ox. Doing things my way. Kenrith is not a bad draw. Do I want to play Fisher Wizard? I'm not discarding Kenrith. So it's just adding a 2-1-2 to the board. I might be better off holding the uh, wizard in hand so I can maybe discard it to Liliana if we draw another good card. Don't see Anointed Chorister in the life gain decks very often. And an Angel of Vitality. Opponent's got one card left in hand that we're gonna make him discard here, but maybe it's something they can get back with Lurus. A Light of Promise. And then I don't think I'm attacking here. We'll just stay back. Liliana's gonna take two from Angel, presumably. Then we'll gain five with Kenrith. Keep your grimy hands off. All right, so Kenrith has some reanimating to do. All right, Archon's not bad, so we can reanimate that next turn. I guess there's no real point in plussing Liliana other than putting Archon in the graveyard, which saves me one mana if they can get rid of Kenrith. But if they draw another Banishing Light, I would rather have Archon in my hand, I think. Opponent pumps Corister, so they can make some tokens with Griffin Airy. Well, 
that was a waste. Angel grows up to a 4-4. Four, four. Drana's nice. Although they do have two tokens to block with, but that's alright. Can play Drana. Give Drana hastes. And get back a creature, opponent can trade. But next turn we can just bring Drana back. Do I want to discard Archon? Not really. So now we're sort of stuck in this weird loop where my opponent keeps getting stuff back with Lurus and we keep reanimating creatures with Kenrith. At some point, Strider could sacrifice Ox to let me draw additional cards, so that's also a play we have available. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick to the plan here. Get my free voice rider. <laughs> Opponent takes it this time. And we'll just pass. Now I can prevent my opponent gaining life thanks to my Wost Rider, as I can chum block and sacrifice. Do I want to sacrifice my ox? I guess we'll just jump with a goat for now. Another ox. So let's cathartic discarding my two creatures. Play Temple, another Archon, I guess that's alright. And then currently have Ox and Archon in the graveyard for my point to let me get back with Drana. Probably just want to cast Archon. In case they get back Ox. I would have to discard Archon otherwise. And then next turn, I can maybe get something else going. So, no lack of Archons. Now we've got Offspring's Revenge, so if we can find something like Morog, we can maybe set up a powerful turn. Go to 4-5 Flyer on defense now, too. Banishing Light probably gets rid of Kenrith here. Sacrifice Kenrith so we can maybe get it back with Offspring's Revenge. So the West Rider is doing some decent work here, preventing the life gain, preventing exile.
So do I want my opponent gaining three? Probably not. So we'll just chump and sack. And is there anything I want to sacrifice in particular? I guess a token's fine, since I don't really want to put more creatures in the graveyard, so I can have more control over what to get back with Drana. And I'm just looking for Morog at this point, I think. Not their Offspring's Revenge. So this can get back Kenrith. And Rana gets back another Archon. Not sure if I want to play the land or keep it for landfall. I guess I'll play it. Don't need another revenge. Kenrith can start gaining life again, and my opponent explodes. Sweet. All our value engines here operating at full capacity. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with pretty unexciting hands, but it's going to change a lot after we cast Reunion and Double Wizard, so at least the mana is functional. Opponent with Hateful Eidolon. And Morog, I guess we want to draw and then discard next turn. And then I don't really want to play Fisher Wizard into an Eidolon since my opponent is just going to kill it and draw a card. Although I might be forced to. Heraldic Banner pumps Eidolon. Alright, fine, I'll play Wizard. Extinction event. That's pretty drastic. But I guess it works. The best thing about zombies is their adoring obedience. Next turn we can play Drana. Aha, uh -huh, Grey Merchants are put on a devotion deck. Let's see if Draenei gets to attack. Lurus can get back Eidolon. That's okay. And Eidolon number two. So I get to attack with Draenei. Which is going to get back a Fisher Wizard. Play another one. And then... I guess I'm into the idea of... Just discarding Archon, which I can get back with Liliana next turn anyway. And then do I cycle Triome? I guess it's fine. Sorry for your loss. Hope they don't find 
an enchantment to go with the Hateful Eidolon. They get another draw from Castle here. Don't really want to trade off my wizards, because then Drana isn't guaranteed to get back Archon, and Liliana's going to die here anyway. So that's fine. I probably hold on to Temple so we can cast Reunion next turn. Underworld Dreams, gonna add 3 Devotion, and it's also quite painful if we cast Reunion here. And Point's gonna attack with Eidolon. They can get one back with Lurus here as well. Backup Drana doesn't do much for me. Alright, so currently don't have any non-legendary creatures in the graveyard. So let's address that. Can sacrifice Archon, attack with... Drana and get the Archon right back. Ooh, Grey Merchants. Yeah, that's gonna be game. Devotion is 10, and we're dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable opening hand. Not sure yet what I'm discarding to Cathartic Reunion. Could also decide to play Passage on turn 2 and then Crystal on 3 to make it more likely that we can ramp out Drana, and I think... Now with Temple, I'll just play Temple. Don't need another passage. Core Blade Master, so opponent on an equipment deck. So they're probably not going to have a ton of removal for Drana. And then I'm still hoping to draw some expensive creatures to discard to Reunion or Liliana, so we can reanimate them with Drana on the following turn. So turn for Drana. Opponent's gonna put a Relic Axe on Blade Master, turning it into a four power double striker. So that's gonna hurt. Well, Rankle's the perfect draw here. So I guess we'll just play Rankle instead of Liliana. Attack with both. And Rankle can sacrifice itself. 
And then I don't mind each player discarding. Do I want to draw? I think I draw as well. Because if I draw an expensive creature, I can still discard it to Reunion here. Alright, so I can play Fisher Wizard or Reunion, discarding Archon to then bring back with Drana. Outlaws Merriments, alright. It's gonna start making various tokens. Kenrith quite a draw as well. Although I can't reanimate Kenrith with Drana. So, yeah, how do we play this? I guess just play Fisher Wizard discarding Archon. Because I don't want a reunion discarding Wizard and Archon, because then they can just give me back Wizard and I want Archon. Right, land means I can play Kenrith as well. And then Kenrith can reanimate my legendary creatures like Rankle. Point gonna draw. The token already tramples. Cycles a raking claws. That could have been pretty strong if they actually cast it. But nope, opponent explodes, so yeah. Managed to top deck a pretty timely rankle to sacrifice the opponent's creature, and then the powerful late game of Drana getting back creatures, and now we also had access to Kenrith to get back some creatures, so that was pretty nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, sort of. We do need to resolve revenge. Could be up against a blue-black mill deck, which can counter my revenge. But I think I'll still keep. Alright, let's scry. Now that the scry maybe still matters before they start milling me. Strider's not really what I need here. More lands would also be fine additions, since we do need to get up to 5 and 6, maybe. There's the blue mana. And a backup revenge is pretty good against the mill deck, since we don't mind having multiples in play. So I guess we'll play Fisher Wizard and discard Harmonious Archon. It's gonna get countered. Yeah, we'll just play Triumph and Pass. Might see some flash creatures end of turn. And Forcer mills me for two. And then... I guess I'll play a Rankle here. Which can help me discard stuff as well. Baits out a Lofty Denial. Alright, so that's two counter spells down. Hopefully Offspring's Revenge resolves.
could play around Lofty Denial, but we don't have a 6 land in hand, so I'm not guaranteed to be able to play around it next turn. So I'd rather just play Revenge and try again next turn. And Drown counters Revenge, that was gonna happen no matter what. The Thieves Guild Enforcer graduated from Thieves School and is now a 3-2. Guess I'll play around Lofty Denial this time. Resolves. And what do we get back? Probably Rankle for now. Or I can get Wizard, discard Archon. Now let's get a Rankle. And then we'll discard and sacrifice, don't need to draw. Opponent discards Lurus, which is surprising. I guess I didn't have double black yet, and maybe they have a Call of the Death Dweller to get it back. Nope, there's a second swamp. Alright, they did have Call of the Death Dweller anyway, gets back Crab. But they've already played a land for the turn. Alright, so we've got some options. Revenge can also get back Kenrith, which can start reanimating stuff, so that's kinda neat. Could just hard cast Archon or Drana. I guess I like getting back Kenrith. And then I'll have to go into full control. And then activate Kenrith. Reanimate Archon. And give the team hastes. I think I'll just send the Archon here and keep a couple tokens on defense. Opponent mills an ox. I'll take five. And then I can cast Drana. Get something back with the Revenge and give the entire team haste. So we'll again go into full control. Bring back Archon. Drana gets to attack and probably send some tokens here. And we'll discard an extra Archon. Maybe could have gotten even more aggressive there and sent uh, Kenrith as well. But I don't think we're losing the late game. Seems fine. Alright, so we've got a lot of options here. Probably just Kenrith getting back a creature. Make that an Archon. Go 
go full control. Get back with Strider. Make a 3-3 goat, give everyone haste and trample. And attack with all. Still have plenty of cards in library, so Ox drawing three is not a problem. Otherwise we could have kept Drana back. And we could have also used Strider to sacrifice whatever creature Lures blocked to prevent a life gain from happening, but that wasn't really necessary here. Well, if our deck gets going against the mill decks and we get an Offspring's Revenge in play, it's pretty awesome. Sometimes, of course, they just counter it and then you just lose anyway. But overall, the deck's pretty fun to try now that the mill decks are so popular. Once the mill decks kind of fade away, You'll have to maybe include some more self-mill cards to make sure you always have enough cards in the graveyard to reanimate. But for now, Offspring's Revenge is a pretty well-positioned card, so take advantage of it while you can. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.